hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're just going to give a, an extra minute or two to allow everybody to join. So please stick with us and we'll start in uh, just a couple of minutes. Hi everyone, thank you uh, so much. Uh, welcome and thank you for joining us in our third of our five part series on staying connected. I'm Stephanie Dibyshev, I'm the Executive Director of Plan Institute. And we are so thankful that you took the time out of your day today to join us, um, which is uh, today's discussion is really about how we can maximize technology to facilitate greater connections. Um, just a quick reminder for those who are joining us for the first time today, um, hello. And uh, so Plan and Plan Institute are family-led uh, and family-driven sister organizations. And really we focus on ensuring that everybody has the opportunity to live their best lives. Um, and while there are you know, various elements to that, of course, one aspect is being a part of and being connected to our community. And that is of course the, sort of the focus of our series. Um, today. So a couple of quick notes. Um, everybody is muted as you'll um, note and we really do encourage you to use the chat function on the right hand side of your screen. We really want this to be a dialogue and we'll be saving the last 20 minutes or so to address those questions. So please do keep them coming. Uh, after the webinar you will be redirected to a, a brief and optional survey and within that survey we will also be sharing uh, a link to a platform where we really do invite you to continue the discussion after this webinar and throughout the series. Uh, we'll post some guiding questions to you know, get the discussion going. We'll also include any resources, links, anything discussed during the session or the, our time today. Um, and a copy of the recording will also be posted there for your reference. 
And then just one final note is that Plan Institute operates um, a free disability planning helpline, which can support questions on a variety of topics, um, including you know, how to stay connected, the registered disability savings plan, the disability tax credit, setting up trusts, estate planning, uh, empowered decision making, um, among other subjects. So uh, we'd, we'd really love to connect. We welcome your call, have your friends, family, um, those you support uh, connect, we're here to help. Um, that number will be on the screen and will also um, be included in the follow-up email. And there's also an opportunity to um, flag for us or indicate to us if you'd like to have somebody from our advisor team or one of our uh, team members reach out to you within that survey that I mentioned, uh, there's a, a spot for you to indicate that. So lots of opportunities to connect and we really do encourage you to do so. So with that, I will introduce to you um, Rebecca Pauls, who's the executive, executive director of PLAN, and she's facilitating this series uh, along with three wonderful guests that we have today who are all part of the HCARD program at KMH. Uh, Yona Lenski is the director of Healthcare Access Research and Developmental Disabilities. Irfan Jiwa is the director of patient engagement, and Victor Pereira is a patient advisor. So with that, I will pass it over to you all to, to get the conversation going. Thanks so much, Stephanie. And hi, everyone. It's so um, great to be together again. This is the third week of our webinar series, and we're just so glad that you've joined us. I don't know about you, but I'd rather be together in a park or maybe at each other's homes or in restaurants, but we know that right now it's really important that we stay physically distanced from each other. So I sure am glad for this technology that we're able to use um, to stay connected, to have conversations and um, some of you are aware of the work that Yona and Irfan and Victor and some of the other self-advocates in Toronto have been doing really using and leveraging technology as ways to stay connected and, and learn during this time. So we're just so grateful to have um, you three as, as part of our conversation today. There are several resources that we'll be sharing um, at the end of our time. You'll receive an email, but we thought for today we would, we would have a conversation about what we're learning, what's working, what maybe isn't working so much and reflect on how those experiences will be. And like Steph said, at the end of our time, there'll also be a question and answer. So I encourage you to write your questions down in the chat box and we'll, we'll do our best to open up that dialogue towards the end. Um, so at this point, I'm really glad to welcome Yona um, to have a conversation. Hi there. Just working with the technology, Rebecca. Isn't, so, isn't that what this is all about? That's right. <laughs> like new pauses, you know, when you have meetings in person, there's a bit more fluidity to them because you're right beside each other, but there's these little pauses that have to get built into these kinds of conversations. Yeah, well, I sure appreciate when things like this happen in all kinds of meetings because we all are just trying our best and learning something new during this time. Isn't that right? For sure. Great. So, Yona, I'm so glad that you were able to join us. When I think about technology, especially during time of COVID, I know that um, you're really working and, and learning about how to use it best in your life and, and in your work. And we're glad that you could take some time to share some reflections with us. I wanted to start, if it's okay with you, just reading a paragraph from your second blog that you put out about technology and then maybe give you a chance to respond to that. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Great. So um, your second blog paragraph starts like this. Times like this fuel innovation quickly. So many of us are reliant on technology to support our new way of living day to day, whether it's purchasing groceries or medications, paying our bills, seeing our doctor or being touched with friends. We use technology to stay safe, to stay connected with others and maintain our physical distance. But there's one group who's being left out of this technology explosion. My sister is part of this group. And today I'm challenging community agencies in the developmental disabilities sector to get creative and to do more to help her and her peers to take better advantage of what technology can offer. And I know that that's challenged me in the work that we do. And I wonder, since you wrote that, that paragraph, what are some of the things that you're seeing that are, that are working well and, and where are the gaps? And, and what are some of your thoughts on that? Sure. I mean, I think 
I did write that toward the beginning. I don't know what things are like in your province, but I can say in Ontario, you know, many of the community agencies, especially in sort of more group home type settings, did not have uh, Wi-Fi for the people who lived in those settings. And, you know, I would say some people who are in sort of supported living settings, and even some people just living on their own or with families, they may have cell phones, but they don't have a data plan, um, or they just use their phone for phoning, or they only know how to text. I mean, everyone had sort of different uh, skills and abilities, but there were a number of people who I'd say didn't have smartphones, didn't have a tablet, didn't have a computer, and then all of a sudden they couldn't do the things they were used to doing, right? So I'd say things have changed. I think you know, agencies responded quickly, both doing things like making sure that, you know, many of the residences where people were being supported would start to have Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. uh, although in addition, like, it's not enough, I think, just to sort of give the technology. You also have to know how to use the technology. <laughs> so the staff supporting those people aren't used to doing that. If the people themselves didn't know how to use that stuff, just handing them a bunch of links or handing them a tablet, it's, you know, it's not that different from handing my mom a tablet who's you know, older and doesn't use some of those things herself either, right? So why would I want to do something like that if I don't know how to do it? I think it was a barrier people maybe weren't expecting. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and then we've seen people figure out, you know, ways to actually meet each other, to practice activities. I mean, Special Olympics, for example, how do you start doing sport with all your teammates when you can't meet with them to do practices? And people have figured out, you know, we're gonna work on this routine together in our rhythmic gymnastics, or we're gonna do this exercise that still helps us work on this part of our body, you know. Um, You've done that all through technology? Yeah, I think people are really starting to do things like that. Um, and sometimes I think when it works, it's like, wow, we didn't realize this was even a possibility and look at what's happening, that's great. And then for some people we're realizing, wow, this actually doesn't work, so. Um, you know, an example where it's working super well and where we couldn't believe it took this long and now we don't ever want to turn back is in healthcare. Okay. Because we've said, I work in mental health care, you know, and um, we have really required for the most part people to have face-to-face -face mental health appointments. And for some people that can be kind of stressful um, or it could just be kind of far, like to go to a specialized clinic like ours might not be nearby, might have a lot of traffic, might be difficult to park, yeah. might be a really difficult part of the day. And all of a sudden we're saying, well, actually we can meet with you but we can meet with you in the context of your own home, you know, where we see you in your home where we can include someone from your family, where you can show us, like, if I want to see how you're managing and you've got something stressful going on, you can actually show me the stress in the background. If, if we're looking at how you're balancing, how you're eating or whatever, and what's a struggle, you can show me what's in your fridge. So all of a sudden there's a lot of things you can do with healthcare that's making healthcare, uh, mental healthcare. And also I think sometimes some aspects of physical healthcare a bit simpler for some people. But I think where it's not working well, you know, if we take, for example, um, saying, well, I know you can't see the whole family anymore, but we're going to have like a Zoom meeting where everyone in the family comes on the screen and it's like we're all together. And one man that I'm thinking of looking at a bunch of his family members on the screen got really upset because he felt like there was this whole party going on with his family and he was the only one who wasn't there. Oh, wow. Right? Because he couldn't grasp that there were multiple people in different locations meeting. Um, just like him, it felt to him like they all must have been in the same place, right? Or some people find watching people on a screen and figuring out what's going on that way, you know, much more stressful than um, interacting with people in real life. Mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, I think a lot of us have talked about Zoom fatigue, people who are sort of having too many meetings and that kind of thing, but I think that applies for people with or without disabilities, right? It works for some people, but not for everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you think of people who haven't been using technology um, up until this point and during COVID when it became the, the only way to really connect with people that this is something very new for them? And, and how's that worked for them? Yeah, I mean, I guess one thing I would say is I think some people don't even want to start because it feels a bit overwhelming. So it's like, again, give the tablet, that's not enough. But I think it, when you coach or support somebody on how to use the technology in a way that's meaningful for them, Mm -hmm. then it can be really exciting, whether it's looking up stuff you've never been able to look up before, or not only listening to your favorite songs, but being able to see the videos of your songs, you know, at your choice, right? Or that now you can suddenly contact people instead of waiting or relying on them to contact you, mm -hmm. right? So there's all kinds of ways we can use technology to see things, to play games, to experience connections with other people. So I think certainly we've seen some people really appreciate um, uh, you know, kind of this, we talk about the leveling of the playing field, right? So maybe I couldn't have participated in that meeting because it was too stressful for me to go to that meeting. But now I can be part of this meeting with everybody else 
Mm -hmm. and I don't have to go anywhere. And actually I feel like I'm an equal player, right? So there's some people kind of doing really well with technology who maybe didn't know how to use it before. Mm -hmm. But again, there's some people I think who are still left out. So we're still learning. Yeah, I think the longer that we stay in this time where we're, we're so dependent on technology and not able to get together some of the things that, that I've heard, and you called it Zoom fatigue, early on it was exciting to see what kind of opportunities came and it was easy to fill up the calendar full of laughter yoga or sing-alongs or, or exercises and, and activities. And now I'm hearing more and more people and families saying like, this, this isn't working for me. I'm not really staying connected or, or people handing their son or daughter their iPad and it just gets thrown to the side or looked at for one minute and put down. And like, I think for a lot of us, it's, it's losing that excitement. And I, I wonder as we um, continue to, to hunker down and, and stay safe and work against COVID, if you have any thoughts or encouragement for us about how to, how to use it, use technology to the best of our ability. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, you know, for example, if I have a day where my entire day is spent talking to people on screen in big groups, mm -hmm. that's just really overwhelming. So kind of spacing out, sometimes it's nice to have a phone call. Yeah. You know, so if you're trying to connect with someone while you're doing an activity. Do I need to see people while I do that activity or would it be okay for me to listen and do an activity? So if I'm trying to be active, and I'm a good listener, could I have like a speaker phone or even like a headset or something while I'm going for a walk, listening to what someone's saying, but I'm doing an activity. So maybe I don't need to be watching anything at the time, right? Um, or like I know at our, at our hospital, for example, you know, if the meeting is for, you know, two people or fewer, don't use a camera. <laughs> oh, that's a good rule to follow. Right? Yeah. Or, you know, we used to think we have to have all these meetings, we have to keep feeling connected. Well, maybe we have to rediscover some time where we're not in meetings at all and mm -hmm. we're just doing something with someone, you know, and especially as we start to figure out, you know, if someone can do a visit where I'm on my porch and they're at the end of my driveway and we can each have, you know, a drink during our visit or an, a popsicle or whatever, maybe that's really great and we need to do that. Or if there's a way to sort of go to the park and someone else is in the park, but we're not coming close to each other, is there an activity we can both enjoy at the same time? So starting to ask, when is it a meeting virtual and when could it be something that's, uh, outdoors, you know, taking advantage of the beautiful outdoors right now and making sure we're still moving our bodies. Yeah. Maybe also thinking about how we use the technology. Like I think one thing that's tiring, if you keep, you know, going into groups of, you know, meetings with 12 people when we're all on mute, that's not very uh, conversational, mm. but it's hard to have a conversation with too many people at the same time. And you have to learn all these new social rules around how we take turns. Yeah. So either learn how to take turns or have smaller groups. You know, we had a group that we um, do every Wednesday with a number of self-advocates from across Ontario uh, started to get really big. And, and it was frustrating because we couldn't ask all the questions we wanted and have all the conversations we wanted. So we started to see, is there a way to maybe have like breakouts or smaller discussions or this discussion is a big group discussion, but we're going to have smaller discussions at a different time. So kind of separating out different kinds of meetings for people because meetings serve different purposes. If we're all watching how to do something, then we can just watch that and there could be lots of people. But if I need to say what I think and you need to say what you think and someone else needs to say what they think, then we need a small group meeting where we're all able to speak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think like a meeting like we're doing right now, hopefully you're all enjoying it, whoever's joined this meeting. <laughs> but if you're not very good at using a chat box and you can't read what's going on in the chat box, you may not feel as connected as you could be. So we, you know, we had one meeting again uh, with a group of people who have disabilities where we thought, let's do it like this but they couldn't see each other and really what they wanted even though it was a bit loud and a bit chaotic was they kind of wanted to see each other and have some time where they could just wave talk a little bit play music whatever so we had to have a shorter meeting so that we could allow some of that unstructured social time which was really important followed by that structured discussion and then a bit more of that open-ended time because at the end of that session they wanted to feel like they connected more than they needed to hear information you know Absolutely. so different people need different things and we all need different things at different times. Mm -hmm. So just because two months ago, this is exactly what I needed two months later, maybe I'm looking for something different. And I think we can just get more and more creative at how we help people um, interact with each other with technology facilitating it. We still need to be doing stuff. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
And I think in person, there's so much that happens naturally, the greeting, the talking, the small talk, sitting down, taking breaks. And what I'm hearing from you is we really need to be intentional when we're planning meetings to ensure that there's time, time and the technology to do so. Like you said, in this meeting, we know we have 100 people watching and, and more on Facebook. And I know I would love to see everyone's faces and have more of a dialogue and a conversation. Um, so I guess it's about learning different types of technology and how to use and plan the types of conversations we're having. Yeah. And every time we're using a different kind of software, like you might feel really good at Zoom, I might feel really good at WebEx, or my organization yeah. might use Teams or Blue Jeans, and I don't know what kinds of other software you use in BC or Alberta, but every time you just switch software, which you think is just a small thing, it's not a big deal, just download it, yeah. they're all completely different in the most subtle ways, which you only discover when it doesn't work. Yeah. And as soon as we figure out how to log into a Zoom meeting, then all of a sudden there's new, very important passwords and other things that, that are there for a reason. But, but in terms of accessibility and like you say, learning new platforms. Yeah. And if, you're, if you've had a lot of experience where something is hard for you and they stick in a new password or make something complicated, your experience of that might be harder than someone who has never really struggled with technology. Yeah, that's so true. That's we so need true. to help, I think, build people up to feel confident with technology as opposed to kind of scare people away. Because for all of us, I'm sure everyone on this meeting has had something not work when they're doing something important with technology. Yeah. And if you don't get, you will, right? Like that's, <laughs> that's pretty much what will happen. But you might feel like if you struggle with technology, you're the only one who has that harder time. And it must be because there's something wrong with you, right? Because <laughs> you don't know how to do stuff. And that can scare you away. So I think helping everybody understand that we always have to have extra time. Things always go wrong. Yeah. Okay. And just being honest. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's great. At this point, I want to invite um, Victor and Irfan to join us here in the conversation. And Yona, I think you can stay on for a few more minutes. And I'd, I'd like to hear about some of the specific types of, of platforms that you're using and what you're using them for. Hi, Irfan. Hi. And I think Victor will join us. Hi, Victor. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Stressed out, like being at home all day, it's just like really getting to my mental health. I'm really not focusing on what I'm supposed to focus. I'm, you know, when I'm inside a house, I feel like I can de-stress, but when, when I have to do work, I can just go to work and just work there and I could just go to my room and just work. But mm -hmm. with this COVID situation, it's just like, okay, I'm inside the house. I'm not being productive. Suddenly all these things are coming up. I'm getting too overwhelmed. I have to like focus on me and okay. like slow Can I ask down. you, is technology helping, like using your cell phone and doing meetings and groups, is it helping with that stress? Yes, yes it is, like, like, it's helping me a lot, like, it's helping me broaden my, my house, like, I can talk to people through face-to-face, -face <laughs> and, and I don't have to worry about getting other people sick, like, I can talk to Irfan and our team and and we could just like talk, have a conversation and when we need a break, we can take a break. And it's through safety and prevention that helps us. So it helps me because it can open my world up by talking to people through video chat and it helps my mental health because I can get to talk to people instead of talking to these four walls right here. Yeah. And and how have you been connecting with Irfan and Yona using technology? Through WebEx and through Zoom chat. And they really are helping my mental health. Like they said like if it's too much for you, just focus on you. We need you at 100%. And right now, I haven't been feeling at 100%. And they respect that. And they have the humility to say that, you know what, Victor is not at 100%. He does not always have to be 100%. He can just take his time right now. There's no rush. Like, it's just been like an easy time working with 
Yona and Irfan. It's just like, I'm really lucky that I get to be able to work with these amazing people at my work. Yeah, and you, they're so underappreciated like right now. They're oh. so underappreciated. <laughs> A little celebration. I, I appreciate hearing that from you three. And um, it sure feels good to know that we can be ourselves and we can do good at things and, and do well and struggle with some things too. Thanks, Victor. Irfan, I'm interested in, in hearing about um, how do you do that? How do you work with technology to create a group where, like Victor just said, people feel comfortable and, and welcome to show up with whoever we are and whatever we're feeling that specific day? Mm. I guess like it's not something that happens overnight, that's for sure. <laughs> There's a lot of sort of planning and back steps that go into it. Um, and it's a lot of setting things up ahead of time. So I know with the group that we have um, of self-advocates that Victor is a part of, um, we almost have been trying virtual meetings with them even before sort of the pandemic almost hit. Um, we sort of prepped them in terms of like having them install some of the software we use for WebEx on their computers. So we had an in-person meeting where they all brought their devices and we got them to troubleshoot it, okay, setting it up and set them ready to go and luckily, um, we did that at a time where I think we usually did that like a week before the that office closed down. Wow. Um, so it, in that, there was, a, there was a good sense of timing there, but we sort of like foresaw that like, okay, maybe this is something that we're going to be moving to is doing meetings virtually. Um, and it's something that's sort of funny enough been on our minds for a long time in terms of trying to grow our team of self-advocates because we wanted to be able to connect with self-advocates that are located pretty far away. And as Yuna has mentioned before, sometimes travel, um, and other disabilities stop you from sort of you know, getting at certain opportunities and we wanted to broaden that. Um, so it's something that we've been looking at more long term and somehow the timing just worked out that way as well. So there's a lot of sort of setup that goes up ahead of time in terms of coaching people on the software um, and helping them have the software ready to go before you have to attend a meeting. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So Victor, which programs have you been using to stay connected? Mostly Zoom and WebEx, you know, Zoom chats. I really have my drama class and my dance class and my basketball class. And I've really been taking classes like yoga class. I've been taking yoga class through Drama Way and it's really been helpful, like to take my mind off of what's happening out there mm -hmm. and just to focus on what makes me happy. And what makes me happy is just like, working on cam eight and like having like friends to like chat mm -hmm. how do you keep track of all of the different classes like drama and basketball how do you know when to get on a zoom meeting i have a good mind and my mother always reminds me so <laughs> that helps that helps when you have a mother and father that are dedicated it helps you stay dedicated as well. Mm -hmm. Last week we did a webinar where we talked about how we need each other and we need a team. And so it sounds like you've got a pretty good team. Oh, I have an amazing team. My mom is an amazing mother. She keeps me on, on the ball all the time. My father just, help, just helps me like be a man, like helps me grow a lot and my sister let me tell you something about my sister she she practices my speeches for me she does my speeches for me and i just put my little victor twist in it and it's good and trust me my sister she's a mother and i'm gonna be a godfather wow. so so it's really it's really nice to have a sister who's who's a mother and also takes care of her little brother as well. I'm <laughs> so thankful care. to have like a nice support group. And That's every awesome. I think if we ever plan a webinar about the importance of gratitude and acknowledging that the role people play in our lives, you should be a guest on that one too. So thank you. Sign me up.
Sign me up. I got your email now. In in terms of technology, just getting back to um, the the specific stories, I just want to open it up to the three of you and and ask if there's been anything that's surprised you or anything that you've learned about using technology, um, kind of the opportunity in in this challenging time. I can share like my photos with everybody. Okay. So, so how do you do that? Step us through the process you use when you share your photos. So I, so I press the little share, share screen mm -hmm. with everybody and I just share my photos. Oh, okay. And then everybody. you talk about them? Yes. That's a good idea. Do you have any other good tips for people? Like I go to the chat a lot and talk through the chat. Okay, kind of like you did when you welcomed everyone and said hi to everyone? Yes, I just want everybody to feel happy and safe and secure. Awesome, we're gonna have some questions and answers and I'm sure people will have some questions for you. I hope I can answer them. I hope so too, <laughs> thanks Victor. Yona and Irfan, is there any um, stories that stand out in your mind? Unmute yourself, Yona. <laughs> Thanks, Victor. I'm just going to say maybe one comment and then I have to slip out a bit early. Okay. Um, but I think, you know, one thing that stood out for me, Irfan, you kind of hinted at this, but the work we've done has been, you know, fairly local. And there's a lot of people, whether it's because they're far away or it's just, you know, too demanding for them with their life to come into our hospital downtown who maybe haven't been part of the conversation. And I've met some pretty amazing people in the last three months. And, uh, you know, I feel like even this, even connecting with folks from BC, once we grab, grasp the time difference, yeah. you know, like there's lots of things we're all doing right now, sharing together, that as we get better with technology, it's easier for us to share with more people and to learn from more people. So I think that's one good thing that stands out for me. I, I agree. And I'm so, so appreciative of that too. Thanks so much. Irfan, what do you think? Okay. Yeah, I think, I guess the biggest thing for me is that um, well, sometimes the learning curve is, is an interesting piece in terms of getting, like figuring out the technology and not just for people with disabilities, but even otherwise, right? Like it's, yeah. it's definitely from new technology. And I think, um, I think I'm someone who's fairly tech savvy, so I've underestimated how challenging it can be for anybody else um, to sort of learn that. So for example, with the groups that we've been having on the Wednesdays, um, those were about like 25 odd people who are fairly used to Zoom. And when we asked them to switch to WebEx just because we wanted a little bit more, because um, that's what our hospital is sort of endorsing. And so we needed to sort of switch over to WebEx. Um, that was a bit of a learning curve. And we sort of just initially like sort of throw them, threw them at it. And it's like, this is the WebEx link. And we just like sort of did that. And there was a lot of feedback from them saying that like, no, we didn't really like it. We want to go back to Zoom. And so we actually had to take time to do one-on-one -on -one training sessions um, before a following meeting to help them sort of figure out this is how WebEx works, these are the controls, this is where the chat box is, um, and this is how we're going to be engaging. So sort of simplifying that process for uh, people with disabilities, making it a little bit more accessible. And, and the, like those were some interesting, I guess, efforts that we did know some interesting learnings coming out of the experience before that training and after that training where people were like, no, we like this, like this is pretty good. And it was nice to see that people were fairly independent having had that one 10 minute training session or whatever it was um, that we were able to set up with them. So it provided, it was nice because we were able to connect with each of our um, individual attendees one-on-one, mm -hmm. -on -one. like there was a personal touch there that I think attendees appreciated, but also as facilitators, we appreciated as well getting to know like the person behind who's not always going to be vocal during a big group meeting because these are meetings which are about 30 people. We got a little bit of a sense of who our audience was. Um, so that was really nice. Yeah. And, and I, I, one thing I'm learning is everyone's computer and iPad and phone, it looks different on everyone's computer. So mm -hmm. I really like that idea of the one-on-one -on -one connection. That's great. Victor, I'm wondering if you have any advice or ideas for people who might feel frustrated because technology seems hard for them or they, they don't know how to access it. What advice or ideas would you have for them? Take it step by step and just ask your family member or someone who 
really understand technology to like explain it to you step by step. Mm -hmm. Great. And what about for people who don't use technology because they're not interested? Maybe they're someone who's more active and like to be walking around all the time or um, for various reasons just can't access Zoom. Um, do you have any thoughts about ways that they can stay connected during this time? We sometimes say the old technology. Through phone call. Phone calls, like, yeah. Yeah, like phone calls, text, like it doesn't always have to be Zoom. You could just like phone a friend or something like that. Mm -hmm. Phone a friend and who wants to be a millionaire, am I right? <laughs> oh, like from that game show, Call a Friend. Yes. I like it. <laughs> That'll be easy for us all to remember. Yeah. What, what do you think, Irfan? Like, I know we all have different comfort levels, even uh -huh. being ourselves on a screen uh -huh. and having conversations. And I can think of, of lots of people that just aren't interested, even though they might appreciate the benefits that would come from, from technology. Have you seen that? And, and what ideas do you have? I think, like, yeah, different people are engaged to a different level, like you're saying, right? And the, the interest is very different. And and it, it's, it's easier when it's, I guess, a smaller group to sort of have different... Um, different media in place or sometimes trying to use technology to accommodate those different interests like some people are like not too fond of looking at themselves so some of the different technology allows you to call people into a meeting where they're using their phone just and they're just doing audio um, so i know that's something we've been using for not only for like if people don't want to be seen but for some people who don't have access to certain types of technology but still making them parts of meetings um, we've had them join via phone and so they're able to still hear the conversation um, and then we try to make sure we're including them in the comments and like take a moment to pause and say that like, okay, since you guys don't have access to the chat box, the people on the phone, do you guys have any questions? Mm -hmm. So those are some things that we've been trying there. Um, but yeah, I think like, um, and like Victor mentioned this uh, before and I want to echo that like, yeah, sometimes going back to the old technology um, yeah. is very helpful. Like I know for me personally, even I sometimes would prefer phone calls with family members and friends because all day long work life is Zoom meeting, Zoom meeting, Zoom yeah, meeting. Exactly. So, um, so like, yeah, like after work life, sometimes it's, if it's not Zoom meetings, it's a little bit more refreshing. Yeah, and all of a sudden the phone call feels a little bit more intimate, a little bit refreshing to have a phone call. Yeah. Is there a switch that's happened? Sometimes you need to like de-stress. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And I like your idea about the phone call or even having audio on. I know a lot of people who, who engage in, in activities on a more passive level by, by being around. Sometimes you just don't feel beautiful and you just want <laughs> to have the audio on. You just don't have any makeup on and you just want the audio on. Am yeah, I right? We all have those days. Yeah. Sometimes you don't have a good hair day. <laughs> you can always or have a good day. Or facial hair day. Or fun, I didn't hear the last thing that you said. I was just adding that you can always have a good voice day if you choose. <laughs> That's awesome. There are a lot of questions coming into the chat box, and I know that the three of us will be able to, to take turns and answer some of those. And, and to the, the participants, if you have other questions, please add them into the chat box. Um, but as we wrap up, um, this conversation section before we go to questions. I just want to ask Victor and Irfan if you have anything else just thinking about technology and, and the way it's really saved us and helped us during this time and all of the limitations, if you just have any closing comments on that. Could I just say something real quick? Yeah. On a serious note, does anybody know what's happening in the United States? Yeah, I'm not sure yeah. if that's related directly to sort of the technology side. It's going to be related to that okay. technology. Think about 10 years ago or 20 years ago, right? If COVID happened 10 years ago or 20 years ago, think about what people's mental health would be like, right? Think about all the stories we would have been misled to if it wasn't for technology and someone taking a video and showing people like the real the real world yeah. like 
That's another can... another spin on using technology, isn't it? And and um, I'm really interested in having a conversation with you, Victor, about that. Maybe another time, just for the sake of time, and because there are of a lot course. of people of watching course. this webinar, I just want to bring us back to the technology piece, but also recognize that you said that with technology, we can share and really understand aspects of of other people's lives and what's happening. I believe technology really helps a focus on what's going on with people's lives. Yeah. Like if if it wasn't for the Zoom meetings and like my phone calls, I would take a nose dive because I would not have been healthy today. Yeah. Well, we it's know. all because yeah. it's all because of Irfan training us and how he can and how he can like train people and like take step by step and how to use Zoom. Yeah. It really helped my mental health. It really helped me broaden my horizons. So I just want to say thank you, Rafan, for being such a good boss. You're most um, welcome, Victor. Thank you for those closing comments, Victor. Any thoughts from you, Rafan? Um, I think just generally, like yeah, like. Um, some great points uh, coming from Victor around like that sense of connectedness and being able to continue to do things. Like I think I really appreciate that technology has allowed, despite not being able to come into the office very regularly, the only reason I'm in the office today is because I was doing a screening shift earlier, but generally like working from home for the most part and still being able to connect with self-advocates and foster those connections with other people, it's just remarkable. Mm -hmm. But again, we are learning as we go, it's still fairly new. Um, and yeah, we're just trying to set up, set ourselves up to do things better and better as we go along. Yeah, yeah, that's so great. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. At this point, I'm going to invite Stephanie to come back um, and join us here. And we'll spend the last 20 minutes of our time looking at some of the questions that the participants have put forth. Hi, Steph. Hi, thanks so much. This has been, been so wonderful. Thank you all so much for, for sharing your experiences and, and your thoughts. And there have been a lot of um, questions that have popped up. Um, and, and one thing that came up a couple of times, um, you know, we've talked about the incredible benefits that technology has allowed us to experience. And wondering um, if you have any reflection on those who, you know, who don't have access um, to the internet and therefore can't participate and how this impacts, um, you know, that part of the community and, and how we can continue to engage and ensure that we include those who may not have the opportunity to access the platforms that we are so thankful to, you know, mm -hmm. be availing of considering everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Victor, we'll have your comment and then Irfan, I'm interested to hear from you as well. Go ahead, Victor. Okay, so my comment is you can just do it through phone. Like, Irfan, like, and Yona, like, call me and to say, like, hey, like, how's your day going? We could do the meeting through phone calls and, like, have a conference call that way. Oh, good if idea. You're, if you're not feeling if you're having a bad internet connection. Mm -hmm. Awesome idea, thank you. Yeah, uh, I think there's a lot of movement right now around um, advocacy for people to gain more access to these connections because a lot of people's opportunities have now moved completely online. And what about those, like rightfully pointed out, but there are people who don't have that access. So there's a lot of a movement even from a disability advocacy standpoint on trying to get those people who don't have access, more access. I mean, I know in Ontario, for example, a lot of um, schools, some students did not have access um, to online resources because they didn't have Wi-Fi in their homes, they didn't have like the right laptops or technology. So there were programs set up to start um, bringing those technology to those families that didn't have it. So very similarly, um, if this could be done for all sort of school children, I think for people with disabilities, they also need to be highlighted as a population that needs um, this access. I mean, internet access should almost be a necessity in today's world, especially given the whole COVID scenario. So I know that there's a lot of work being done um, from an adv advocacy standpoint. And I've heard some great things coming out of BC, actually, where I've heard that TELUS has sort of a, a lower cost, a Wi-Fi plan option for families who are struggling that you can apply for. Um, so it'd be great to see like those sorts of initiatives sort of more 
um, nationwide and in different places so that people who need those things can get access. And I know that there's, again, out of the, the work that we're doing with some of the self-advocates, um, this conversation has come up there. So there's an advocacy group that's um, a sort of mini coalition that's coming together um, around petitioning for more internet rights and trying to get this access, whether that's through passport funding um, or other areas to try and bring the access to people who don't have that access. So I know that's been a hot topic recently. Yeah. I think your question would be like, if somebody does not have internet, mm -hmm. like if somebody does not have internet, right. like what are the other alternatives? Is that mm -hmm. what your question is, Rebecca? Um, that was, I think, the question when people don't have access to it, and, and your response, Victor, and, and Irfan's were good. I think the thing that I'd add to that is, especially in terms of um, gaining information, a lot of organizations are having meetings, and a lot of the news is coming out. One thing that we're learning within plan networks is that can be a role for a network member. Um, if there's aging parents or people that are ill or not able to be involved but still want the information, they can ask a friend or a family member, hey, can you participate in the plan call and then give me a call on the phone and let me know, know what the new information is. So if we're not someone who's able or interested in accessing email or Zoom calls, that's a really easy way to work together with another person. Mm -hmm. Nice, yeah, that's, that's a very interesting idea there that like, yeah, you offload that responsibility to somebody else and have that shared network access. Right? Yeah. Thanks. And um, just as a side note, somebody who unfortunately had to pop out of the conversation, but mentioned that um, their loved one has a, a you know a, a formal network, and what they've done is they've recorded the network meetings through Zoom, and then ensured that their family member has that video recording, and she can watch it back over and over again. And she oh. found that was something that was really allowed her to stay connected, even if it was at a time when you know she wasn't able to connect. Um, and so that was just something a really lovely tip that somebody popped through. So I wanted to share that with everybody. That's a great tip. I can think yeah. for like staff planning meetings and other meetings yeah. where everyone's sharing their ideas. Sometimes in the moment, it's so overwhelming to hear thoughts mm -hmm. and ideas. But if it was a planning meeting where I was sharing my goals and dreams and fears, to be able to watch that video and hear different people's perspectives, that's a really good idea. Especially when, you know, others have mentioned, you know, sometimes it can feel overwhelming when there are a number of people all talking over one another and you see people's faces maybe flashing in and out of the screen. It can sometimes feel as though you're not able to engage or participate in the way in which you maybe would like to. And so that's another opportunity for you to, um, you know, participate in another way to sit and reflect. And especially if there are opportunities to continue that connection, it allows you to sort of sit and digest it. So really great. Great suggestions coming in from the chat, so thanks so much. Um, so uh, this is something Yona mentioned um, previously, but you know, being able to connect virtually with people in a you know in a mental health care setting, and um, you know what your team has has sort of engaged in, and and what benefits that can have. And I'm wondering if um, you know how you've managed to balance the challenges of those new opportunities with uh, the benefits. Um, or sorry, the benefits of those new opportunities with the challenges. And do you think that these sort of virtual aspects um, that have been developed will be continued after we've, you know, found our way back to some form of being together physically? Hmm. Well, um, Irfan, I, can I just talk? Sure. Okay. So Irfan and I have been doing a tool called My Health Care Visit and about my health. It's an online form you can fill out, and you can, and you can, and you can fill out the form online, and you could give it to your doctor, and your doctor, and it can best help communicate with your doctor. Mm -hmm. So if you're feeling nervous about communicating with your doctor, you could just fill it out, fill out what your what your problems are, mm -hmm. how you're feeling today, right. how to best cope with your mental health, and, and what medications you take, what allergies you have, and you could just do it online. Right. And there's no, there's no fear of 
miscommunicating with the doctor because you already filled out a form. So mm -hmm. you so can. Victor is talking about is this, these online healthcare communication tools that can be used um, for virtual visits, even right, Victor, where you can send your um, forms ahead of time to your doctor, and then the doctor reviews them with you online. Um, but I think that um, the point about like, yeah, what is healthcare or what is mental healthcare even gonna look like going forward once we resume sort of more, um, you know, take away more of these restrictions, I think it's gonna be a very blended model um, going forward where we're gonna have a mix of um, virtual and in-person appointments. It's almost gonna be like, okay, um, for every appointment request, there's gonna be a system where it's like, okay, does this need to be um, a virtual appointment or can this be, or does this need to be a in-person appointment? Because um, in terms of pros and cons, there are some situations where it's great that I don't have to travel and like go really far to meet my specialist. But in some settings, I want to be in a space where I'm just, it's just me at the appointment. And as some, for example, as a person with um, a developmental disability, we've heard from some people that like, they don't like the fact that if they're in their own living environments, for example, if they're in a group home, they don't have that privacy or in a setting where they have, um, it's just them and the doctor, like there could be other things going on in the background or whatnot. So there's going to be, I think, very tailored for each appointment, almost like, okay, like, you know, when you're booking uh, your family doctor, why are you here? Or like, what is your main reason to book your appointment? There's almost going to be, have to be a conversation there that like, okay, do you want a virtual or do you want an in-person? So it's going to, I, my sense is it's going to be a blended form uh, of healthcare going forward. So the healthcare field is, is going to look very different. It already does look different, but like what it looks like going forward, I think it's going to be forever changed in some way. Mm -hmm. I find that so exciting to think about and even learning from you today and thinking about what it looks like in the future, even for the work that we do at Plan, helping people to, to build and maintain their personal support mm -hmm. network. We haven't been able to get together personally, especially with large groups of people, which is what we normally do. Um, so we've had to depend on Zoom and other technology. But the interesting thing is when we have network meetings and planning meetings, our attendance and participation is up to almost 100%. Because everyone can join by Zoom if they have the time. The travel's um, no longer an issue. So some people's cousins and friends who have lived further away are now able to participate. And so for us, I imagine, like you say, a blended model, or if we are in person, I kind of have a feeling we're going to want to have a computer close by so that those that can't come mm -hmm. can join in as well. Mm -hmm. It feels like of a course, lot of technology is winning and we're happy it's winning because we can, we can reach a further market that way. We can reach people through BC, Alberta, yeah. Also, I'll kind of through Zoom meetings and WebEx mm -hmm. meetings. Yeah. I think technology is, is amazing that way. Yeah, definitely. And there's so many of us as people with disabilities and families and, and community groups who are doing the same type of work. Mm -hmm. And so using technology and, and leveraging that allows us to have conversations like this and to learn together. Um, and so if less of us are making the same mistakes and planning and talking together, just think of how much our energy can, can go further to continue to, to solve the challenges that, that we face every day, not just COVID related. Mm -hmm. So get the traffic, am I right? Forget that Forget Toronto tra traffic. We can just <laughs> think of the past. <laughs> yeah, like. I think we have time for a couple of more questions yet. Steph, is there anything coming in through the chat box? Yeah, so, um, and Rebecca, you touched on this a little bit previously when you, you talked about sort of the need to be intentional. And we've had a couple of questions come in throughout about how we can really, you know, create that intentionality in our meetings. Whether, you know, some people were mentioning they were struggling with, um, you know, when there was a, a a Zoom call where support staff were perhaps not engaging fully with those um, they support when on Zoom, you know, and were instead perhaps chatting amongst themselves, um, or others were struggling to, you know, conduct training for those who may have, you know, complex needs. And wondering what your thoughts are and if you have any tips around how to um, really hone in that intentionality and combat some of those challenges that 
that come with the benefits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The first thing that comes to mind is actually going back to Yona's blog and we'll share um, with each of you who are participating in this meeting a list of resources and on the H card website and some of the things that Yona's reflecting on. I have it in front of me. Um, she's talking about things like technology, not just being for staff, how it can help with family connections, how it can help stay connected to people in our programs. Um, I, I think that, that people who are interested in what we've been discussing will also like those ideas that have been shared. And in, in terms of intentionality, I like some of the ideas that we've been talking about on our call. First, Yona's that I'm gonna make as a rule, like if there's less than two or three people, can we just have a phone call and not necessarily a Zoom meeting? Like not just defaulting to the fact that it has to be um, there. But then also I've spent a lot of time on Zoom moderating meetings and some of the things that I think about are just, is there, is there space for people to just chat? And more recently, I'm most concerned that, that everyone has a chance to talk because so many people are, are defaulted to mute. And depending on what computer we're on, sometimes we don't even see every person who's on the phone. And, and um, Victor, you talked about some of the things happening in the States. And I'm just really aware of these days um, who's, who's part of the meeting, whose voice is being heard. As the moderator, I take um, a very big responsibility in, in, call, in creating that space for, for, for the voices. So um, I think in terms of intentionality, it's, it's the same as if you'd be facilitating any meeting or planning any party, ensuring that there's hospitality and, and a welcome and, and a chance to talk. What do you think, Irfan? I think like the points around like, yeah, like bringing the learnings that we have from um, our normal in-person meetings to online has been, I guess, the challenge recently of like, okay, how do you maintain that same etiquette, especially around like things like mute and mute culture, like, okay, when is it appropriate to do those things? And as a host, yeah, I've totally had meetings where I can relate um, that like, yeah, like you feel almost too powerful, like muting and unmuting voices and you feel that like, yeah, like um, there's a lot of onus and responsibility in that of like, you know, who are you controlling in terms of their voice, right? Um, so yeah, definitely some interesting thoughts there um, around like, you know, doing that in a respectful and mindful way. And again, we're learning as we go. So a lot of the times we, um, from it, like, again, coming back to the intentionality point, we almost like to set up sometimes rules ahead of time at the beginning of the meetings where these are these almost like, you know, group norms when you're like forming any sort of groups, like we set up the, the expectations and the rules for the group where it's like, okay, Generally, please ensure you're muted unless you have a point there. We'll make regular pauses where we will allow people to unmute themselves and you know provide comments. So almost setting up um, some etiquettes that are appropriate depending on the size of the group and the type of group, um, but having some almost um, agreed upon rules um, that you can even set up even among group members. It doesn't have to always be top down. It could be a very collaborative process to even set up like, okay, how are we gonna go about doing things um, mm -hmm. respectfully and taking some time especially if that's a meeting that's going to be very frequent, um, then it, it's, it's worthwhile taking some time to like say that like, okay, these are the things that we're going to follow um, as some core principles in terms of guiding our, our online meetings, just as we would for a normal in-person group session. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's again, like what, what do we want to achieve through a mm -hmm. meeting and, um, even this type of call, we, we could have made it into a webinar and said, here's seven things that you can do to stay connected. Mm -hmm. But these days with, with, the, with the internet and with other meetings, you can easily search that. Like I think that being generous, the way we take up people's time and having a conversation and, and looking at what, what would be enjoyable? What would, mm -hmm. How can we take the normal interaction that we'd normally have um, and, and use technology to the best that we can? Definitely, yeah. Like you just have to give value to the people who are attending, right? To to get take away from that sort of Zoom fatigue, or some of the other things that people are coming across, where they're like, you know, just in meeting after meeting after meeting, and there's no transition time between meetings because you don't have to worry about traffic anymore. Um, yeah. We just need to be intentional with our time and like use it well and wisely, and and provide value all around for attendees for um, to make sure that we're we're doing our best. So like again, finding out that finding out what that is and, and doing it well. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And Victor, you started out talking about being in the meetings with Yona and Irfan where you could just show up. And if you didn't know the answer, you could say that and there was no shame and you could just be yourself. There's no awesome. judgment. At There's all. no judgment. And that's, I think, one of the things that have been so strong for me during this COVID time. In the conversations I've been involved with, I think there's we don't have any time or energy to kind of fake it or to go through the motions. I think when we are together connecting, we're being more authentic and sharing how we feel and, and what we want. And, and, and I know that's really refreshing for me. And so making sure that anytime we're together, we're, we're giving each other that, that grace and making sure that we're having as much fun as we can with all the limitations, right? Totally, yeah. Like, because that's, that's how we get our energy. Yeah, yeah. We're coming close to the end um, of our time. This conversation is, has gone by quickly. And I just want to remind um, everyone who's, who's participating, we've also set up um, an online dialogue in a program called Teachable, which is sometimes used for online courses, but we've set it up just as a safe space outside of social media to bring questions and to have conversations. Um, because one thing that at PLAN that's really important to us is learning from each other. And so I want to invite and, and ask that you participate in that to keep this conversation going. Because I know for me, Victor, I've learned a lot from you and been encouraged to hear your stories and Irfan and, and Yona um, the same. So I want to thank you so much for, for spending a bit of time with us and just give you one more chance for any, any thoughts as we say goodbye to the call. Anything to say, Victor? Have an amazing day. Try to survive this COVID. And remember, it's going to pass. So when, we, when it passes, just make sure you're thankful for the people who have been there for you. Just be thankful to the people who've been paying attention to you. Just be thankful that you're in this time period and not 20, 30 years ago, because <laughs> today is marks a day in history where COVID happened and we survived and we thrived during this pandemic. Thank you, Victor. Can, can you top that, Irfan? Oh, I know. I can, I, I, <laughs> sometimes it's hard to follow Victor. Sometimes, sometimes <laughs> it's an understatement. Um, but I'll just add, like, yeah, like, just like Victor is saying, like, you know, we've, the technology has allowed us to connect so well and remembering those connections um, even after everything is over in the pandemic sense and appreciating and learning. I think the biggest thing for me has been the learning um, that's been really stimulating of like the sense of novelty and but the novelty never wears off once you learn something and you think you've got it right things slightly change um, and you have to keep sort of going with the flow um, and and that's that's what I think the technology is beautiful in that way because it, it evolves and we evolve with it yeah for sure. one more question for Irfan do we have time for that? I think we need some closing I, I comments. I think we better take that to the online dialogue, Victor, because we could talk about this forever. So from the three of us, I'll say bye-bye. And, and Steph, do you have anything to say? Just a big thank you so much to everybody who, who joined us today for uh, this conversation. And thank you so much, Irfan, Victor, and, and Yona, and Rebecca, of course. Um, a reminder, please feel free to give us a call. Um, call our Disability Planning Helpline if you want to chat with Rebecca or um, anybody within the team. If you had any questions that you didn't get answered, pop us an email, give us a call, and we'll be happy to make sure that um, you get those answers. We're really eager to continue the conversation. Of course, pop it on the, the, um, the discussion board. All of those links will be sent in the reminder email or in the follow-up email, rather. And uh, we really look forward to, to hopefully um, hearing from you or having you join us next week, um, one week from today, same time. And it's about how, you know, the little things can make a difference. So thanks so much. Take care and um, Bye, everyone. stay safe and connected, everyone. Thank you and take care, everyone. Bye, guys. And that's all she wrote.